What's going on YouTube? It's Pilfrey, and this is the new Aquascape. This is all carrot seed life rock. Um, there's 40 plus pounds of rock in here, which it seems overwhelming that it's like a wall of rock. And unfortunately, I have to deal with losing, you know, four inches because of the overflow. But I wanted to kind of swoop it around here and I think I did a pretty good job now you know I didn't leave myself a lot of room to clean the glass so but I wanted all of the room to be up front and I don't know if this is the final scape but let me tell you you know whenever you go into a project like this once you start you know you better be ready and, and willing to just finish it um, I did cycle the new rock in the brute camp with um, some Ciparax and some rock that came out of the sump. Um, it cycled for about four weeks or so and then I also for the last week and a half or so was adding the Brightwell Microbacter 7 bacteria to the rocks and I was ghost feeding it uh, every other day just to give it something and put it in the tank now. Um, I did the whole structure that was on the right. I did bust it up because it was Marco cemented together. And there's two large sections of that rock in the refugium here. And then I just packed the skimmer section with that rock um, because it's got sponges and everything else on there. And um, while I was at it, I do have the water level just a little high right now, but I did lose um, some water volume due to the change of the rockscape, I guess. The new rock is just a little bit more dense. I mean, that other structure that I had in here was was pretty significant. Matter of fact, I didn't know if I was going to get it off or out of the tank without removing the radions. Now, luckily, I can. This bar moves up and down pretty easily uh, with an Allen wrench, so that was an option. But I did get it out. I, I drained the tank down about halfway and um, put a towel over the tank whenever I pulled the uh, rock structure out, just to be on the safe side. And of course, I had towels everywhere i uh, had my 30 gallon brute can over here so you've seen this in a previous video but i did the same thing now i did move some corals around and the good i didn't want to go real high with it but i knew that i wanted to take up as much real estate with rock as possible and i don't know if this piece is going to stay there but the the uh i did also aside from the rockscape here I did lower the intensity down to like 45% because the quick update on the corals is that stylo's doing all right. That stag is about gone. That was the um, part of the uh, green slimer. If that rasp would move out of the way, there's another part of the green slimer. So yeah, didn't have good luck with that. Lost for some reason the... Uh, Acan's there, the Enchinata's doing horrible, the Brain Coral's doing horrible. This was in the back of the tank previously and I wanted to move it to the front. And then I got my Euphilias over here. I'm not worried about the torch because it's on its way out anyway. There's a new guy. There's a Flasher Rass, a Black, uh, black Moskers. I think I said that right. Black Fin Flasher Rass. So, I do still have the leopard grass, which is really hard to see in the tank, even though I have the whites on, and the ruby head. And I did get some more fish in. I got the black fin flasher wrasse, and I got a radiant wrasse. And unfortunately, the radiant wrasse, even whenever I saw it in the bag, he had bulging eyes. So he never made it into the tank. I put him in a bucket. I was waiting to see what was gonna happen with him acclimated everything to temperature, then acclimated everything to the correct salinity. As you know, uh, live Aquarius ships and most other people, I guess, with fish ship at a lower salinity. But the, the new smaller guy made it. He's just hiding down here. Beautiful little fish. Um, but the radiant wrasse, which is the reason why I even placed an order, did not make it. So if you don't know this, but the leopard grass, which again is hard to see, because of his colors, but he does have some colors on him. Is an expert only fish, and the radiant breast is an expert only fish, and 
on any fish that Live Aquarius sells that's expert only. You don't get the 14 day guarantee. You get a DOA guarantee, but not a 14 day guarantee. So I sent them the bulging eyes, multiple pictures of it. I'm sure they'll take care of me. Oh, speaking of Live Aquarius, whenever I placed this order, I actually filled out their survey. And at the end of the survey, I typed up this like thousand word uh, comment in there. Basically it was myself and some guy named Johnny I was explaining Live Aquaria to Johnny. And uh, out of the, uh, the next day, I get an 800 number phone call. And I answer, I've been answering telemarketer phone calls and just wasting their time because it's hilarious. But anyway, I answered the phone. Guy said, hello, I'm from Live Aquaria. How are you doing? I said, <clears throat> oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? You know, I figured they were going to say all of your, your stock is, or all of your items that you order are out of stock. And... We're just gonna have to cancel the order or whatever but that wasn't the case he said we read your story i read your story and, and everybody else here read your story and we loved it we're all dying laughing at your story and i had it saved in a notepad file on my computer at work and i closed it just like two hours before he called me because i was like it's stupid i'm not going to share it with anybody but i wish i had it so if you see it um pelfrey talking to johnny and then johnny visiting live aquarium and fall in love with live aquarium then just let me know um Let's see, what else is going on? I am still dosing nitrates. I did scrape the back glass, forgot to mention that. I did scrape all the coral line off the back glass. I had to use a razor blade and do it manually because the hand scraper that I have sucks. The tune scraper does well if it's like a film on the glass, but whenever it starts to get to hard spots, it just doesn't get them. So let me know if there's a great uh, scraper. I was looking at maybe like the Tiger Shark or uh, I forgot what it is, but they're expensive. They're like 80 bucks. Just because I don't want to put my hands in there. I didn't get all the coralline algae because like I said, I was doing it by hand and I really didn't want to get real close to the seams on the take. So yeah, let me know what you think of the aquascape and let's head on out to the garage real quick. All right, out in the garage, it's always, we've always got stuff going on. There's the two tanks that I got a while back. But we've always got stuff going on. That's a spray booth so that we can do this and the kitchen table and whatnot but I got my two 40 gallon containers full there's probably more than 40 gallons in there I let it go all the way up to here and I think I've explained this before but I use this and I connect the two and I just open the valves and I can put my RO line in one of them and they'll both fill up the same instead of filling this one up and then this one so this has been great and you know the thing is is if I put this piece on here like this and say this container's down here and this one's all the way up here, they will balance out. This one will drain over to this one and balance out. Now I do open both of the lids so that air can get into them, but they do have little compression fittings on top. So whenever you are draining water out, it does release air. Great, great. Um, I did take the zebra dark fish out of the tank. He's in here. This is where I cycled the life rock and um, that's still a live rock with a bunch of Ciparac, so the zebra dark fish is in there. Don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet, but that's where he ended up. I installed, I've never done this before, I don't know why, but the float switch, and I am making RO water. Um, I figure I'm probably gonna make between 20 and 30 gallons. I don't really know where, this is a 32 gallon brute, and my guess is, is where I've got it at, it's gonna make right at 30 gallons. And I'm gonna do a large water change because I just killed all the SPS. Um, I don't know what's going on with my tank. I probably need to do an ICP test, but I'm going to do a 30 gallon water change, which is significant with the Live Aquarius salt, you know, talk about Live Aquarius again. Um, and just, you know, this is the time to like restructure. I just put new rocks in the tank and yeah, I'm just going to do a big water change. I'll probably adjust the tunes pumps a little bit because before this one over here was able to deflect off of the rock and I'm hoping everything likes where it's at. I used some Seachem like reef glue because that's what I had. Usually I use like the BSI gel. I know it's more expensive and you can use any gel whatever but uh, I like the BSI glue and the the Seachem glue was it was actually really good. It was really thick and um, I didn't even put the little nozzle on there because a lot of these, especially the uh, wall hammers, just have large bases on them. And you can see that hammer right there fell over quite a bit. 
but it worked out pretty good. Uh, some pretty good glue. I also used that uh, CCAM reef glue there. I, I am gonna dose Microbacter 7 in the tank still, just for uh, beneficial bacteria. And after I've done my water change, I'm also going to add this 8.45 ounce, 250 milliliter Biospira. So I've used this numerous times before. I really like it. I think that it works. It's just my opinion, take it for what it's worth. Um, so aside from that, I am dosing a very, very small amount of Kalkwasser. There's really no point in me dosing it at this point since I scraped the coralline algae off. My alk has been creeping up anyway because it's, the coralline algae is not there to consume it. So I probably should have done sections of it at a time, but <laughs> I started on it and I just went to town on it. And the next time that I do it, uh, if the back glass fills up again, I will probably drain the tank down um, just because with it being a rimless tank, I got water everywhere. If I drain the tank down just a little bit into like one of my 10 gallon brutes, I think I'll be fine. So, um, oh yeah, the, uh, the emerald crab that I have, look at this guy, beautiful fish, beautiful fish. The pintail right here has been picking on him a little bit and I've actually had the lights off all day and I'm about to turn them off again. I like to do that when I add new fish just so they're not getting picked on, they can't be seen, they can go high, but, uh, I took the big rock structure out back and used a sledgehammer, a smaller sledgehammer, like a three pound hammer to break up the rock structure. And my emerald crab was on it. And um, so it sat outside in like 30, 35, 36 degree weather for a long time. Finally got him in the tank. He's been a great, great asset to the tank. And I only have one that I know of. And if something happens to him, I'm definitely gonna order some more. So, and I do have, the mushrooms just hanging out back there but you know what I, I like the rock structure overall i think it's got a lot of potential there's just a lot of places to put corals now and i'm gonna probably buy a couple more fish before i go down the core route and i'm probably gonna do an icp test before i add any more corals to it so anyway rambled on enough as always i appreciate you following along be sure to check me out on instagram at pelfrey's brief check out the website at pelfrey.net and i'll catch you on the next one